It's the Scott Sand Show everywhere on our free iHeartRadio app. Thank you so much for listening this afternoon. Tomorrow, a very special day, the anniversary of the launch of MTV. How many times have you heard this song? Martha Quinn, original MTV VJ, Martha Quinn. This is, I, I, I'm so honored to have you on the show, Martha. This is so great. We're also on Zoom, by the way, at WSPD.com. Uh, it's so great to see you. Thank you so much for your time. Well, thank you for asking me. And in answer to your question, I've heard that song thousands of times. And Scott, I have to tell you, and I was just talking to my fellow original MTV VJs, Mark Goodman, Alan Hunter, and Nina Blackwood. JJ Jackson is no longer with us, but I was talking to Mark, Nina, and Al about that song and saying every single time I hear it and they're the same, we get choked up a lump in our throat because it was the beginning, not only of the MTV generation, but such a crazy ride on that rock and roll rocket ship. I actually get chills and I wasn't even there. I was, I was what, 12 years old. I think when MTV launched, my, my parents couldn't afford cable TV. So I had to deal with the, the, the cheap knockoff night tracks on TBS for, <laughs> ye- for years. I'm not even sure MTV was available in Alabama and Mississippi for like decades after, after the network launched. But now as you know, I'm a, a music enthusiast, I'm an, a kid of the eighties. I've gone back on YouTube and watched, you know, those first hours of MTV. I've got my own first hour MTV launch playlist on our iHeartRadio app. Uh, and it still, it sends chills down my spine because so many, so many memories of my youth associated with watching you and, and the crew of original VJs on MTV. It's pretty amazing. And when I go back and watch those videos of the early days on MTV, I watch it now, Scott. And I think to myself, wow, I didn't realize what a kid I was at that time. You know, I had graduated college. I had worked at the radio station that Bob Pittman, are you from Mississippi? I I am. Bob Pittman and I worked at the same radio station in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, obviously years apart. And now I'm working for Bob Pittman as as CEO of iHeartMedia now. And Bob Pittman used to be the program director of a radio station in New York City, After he left, I was there, but one way or another, Bob Pittman hired me for MTV and then cut to, you know, the 21st century. And then he hired me again to be here on iHeart with you. I'm on 80s Plus at 103.7 in San Francisco, also here on the iHeart Radio app with you. Right. It's so cool. We're we're actually working for the same company now. And I, I, as a kid watching you, I'm not sure I ever would have believed that would have happened. Oh, but thank you for saying kid. That's what I started to say. So well, and wh- sorry about that, because you look and, and I'm not trying to be creepy and you're still got, you, you look exactly the same as you did on TV on MTV. OK, this is what you call a very good interviewer right here. Scott Sands, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. No, but Scott, when I look back at those tapes of me from the early days, I go, oh, my God, I didn't realize what a kid I was. Like Rick Springfield says that his first memory of MTV is walking into the studio and seeing a 12 year old sitting there waiting to interview <laughs> him. And I never quite got that joke until recently when I was watching the videos and I thought, oh, my God, I was kind of like Doogie Hauser. <laughs> you know, and, and, and as you look back on that original crew, every, I relate to all of you to like Gilligan's Island. There was the Marianne and the Ginger and the Professor. And, you know, there the, the, the cat, it, it just seemed there were so many different personalities and you all fit together in this amazing jigsaw puzzle that led to perhaps the most influential piece of pop culture for for decades and for generations like myself. It's funny you said that about Gilligan's Island. When we were doing a photo shoot for People Magazine for I think it was our 20th anniversary reunion. And I said to JJ Jackson, I said, oh my God, we should do it like Gilligan's Island, you know, Nina Ginger, me, Marianne, the whole thing, you know, Mark is the skipper, JJ the professor, Alan Hunter, Gilligan. And JJ goes, don't suggest that. They'll do it. And I, I thought it was good, but he was not having it. <laughs> this is so fun. <laughs> We're talking with Martha Quinn, uh, 80s plus in San Francisco on our free uh, on our iHeartRadio app. How did you even land that job? I mean, there was no position of VJ in the in the 80s. I mean, you don't look for an ad. There was no Internet. You just kind of how does that even happen? Well, 
they took an ad out in Billboard magazine, which is how Jay, uh, I'm sorry, Nina and Mark heard about it. JJ got the job because Brian May of Queen was hanging out with our friend Bob Pittman at the Montro Jazz Festival. And of course they Bob were. was telling him, you know, he's starting this cable channel. And Brian May said, you know who you should talk to? JJ Jackson, this guy in LA, he does great videos because he was on a rock radio station in LA and was doing, you know, rock radio coverage for the Eyewitness News station at that time in Los Angeles. So he had TV experience and music experience. And I was kind of in a similar boat though, from a much more junior point of view. I got myself through college doing television commercials, like saying things like, you'll go nuggets for McNuggets, you know, that kind of thing. That's how I got myself through college. But I also worked at the college radio station and I interned at WNBC in New York. I was very, I mean, basically I worked at a radio station that had a college attached. I don't remember anything about classes, but I was right. completely immersed in the college radio station. So I had my radio training and my TV training. And I didn't know when I graduated college, what I was going to do. Was I going to move to LA and be an actress? Was I going to send out you know, cassette demo tapes and try to be on the radio. And as I was making that decision, a couple of weeks after I graduated college, I went up to WNBC, I was hanging around the offices and somebody said, hey, what's Bob Pittman doing? And this other guy in the office said, oh, he's doing this MTV thing. And then he turned like, beep, 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 beep looked at me and said, Martha, that's what you should do. You should be a VJ on MTV. He called Bob right then. Within 20 minutes, I was in a cab going down to audition. Wow. That's, I mean, that's an amazing whirlwind. Yeah, it's crazy. And I'm glad I didn't know that it was going to be such a pop culture disruptor, like uh, be a meteor on the landscape of the world, because I would have been nervous in my audition, but I wasn't nervous at all because it was like, I have no idea what this is. This could be a Campbell's Soup audition. This could be this weird thing. Well, you know, it's funny. I don't know if you've listened to Bob Pittman's podcast, yes. Math and Magic. I've I've probably listened to the story of, of the creation of MTV a dozen times because I love that story so much. And at the time, I don't think even Bob Pittman realized how big MTV would become. It was really a, a, almost just a New York, New Jersey cable outlet at the time that that just gained steam. And, and the, the campaign, I Want My MTV, really caught on and, and uh, cable networks around the country began to pick it up over the next couple of years, and it became the phenomenon that we now know as MTV. MTV was so huge. We wouldn't consume it by the video. We would consume it by the hour because nobody could get enough of it. Nobody had seen anything like it. There were times when I, Martha Quinn, was late to my job at MTV because I would be home watching MTV, you know, with the remote, like, okay, one more video. Okay, one more video. Okay, one more video. Oh my God. Okay, one more. Because you couldn't stop. We'd never seen anything like it before. Now we're used to it. We know what it is. But it's hard to remember that back then it was monumentally mind blowing. And we, I, I still miss the music videos on, on MTV. I mean, there, there are some, bit, there have been some great pop culture shows that have come along. Uh, but now, you know, YouTube is the place where you get music videos, and artists are still putting them out but I don't think they're putting the same attention. You're never going to see another Michael Jackson thriller. You're never going to see another, uh, another band like Duran Duran that became popular in part because of MTV. It can, you can't go back, as Don Henley said, you don't look back, you can never go back. It's like there can never be another MTV because that initial impact was so massive. Do you remember when the PT Cruiser came out? Right, right. You would stop in your tracks when you saw one go by. People would like wave on the street when they saw PT cruisers go by. Like it's such a funny thing, but now you don't think about it, but it was, it was kind of like that, you know, when something's new, you know, we were the Beatles of the eighties. We were as much a culture disruptor as like Uber, you know, that just came out of left field. It's just like bursted onto the landscape. Nobody saw it coming. I didn't know that MTV was happening. I didn't know anything about it. And even the buggles, you know, they got a call, Hey, can we use this video? We're going to make it the first thing, you know, this cable thing. They're like, yeah, mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> Little did they know, they too, with us, I was tweeting to Jeff Downs today saying, you know, you're always in my heart because we're all just 
linked. It's like everybody who was part of the MTV generation at that time, it's like we all went to the same high school. You too. We all went to kind of MTV high because you know the John Bon Jovi's, the Madonna's. We all know the same people. And one thing about YouTube is you can pull a video up anytime. You know, middle of the night, you can pull up and watch any new Rihanna video, whatever it is. But back then, you had to sit. If you wanted to see Journey separate ways, you had to sit there and wait and wait and wait. And when it finally did come on, you would like scream and call all your friends, okay, it's on, it's on. It was so much more exciting. Well, and as a 14-year-old boy, I would sit for hours upon hours waiting for Madonna like a virgin. That was your, that was the video that you waited for? Oh, that, so that may have been the one. But I mean, even like uh, when Thriller came out, that was an event. That, oh I mean, God. I remember MTV, nine o'clock tonight, you're going to see uh, Michael Jackson's video for Thriller. And well, all of my friends gathered around a t- you know, little black and white TVs in bedrooms all across uh, Mississippi yeah. to, to watch Michael Jackson's Thriller. Amazing. I mean, the way you describe it, it reminds me of when people gathered around the screen to watch, you know, the moon landing or something. And it was very unifying for the country because everybody watched it together. Everybody enjoyed Michael Jackson together. Everybody enjoyed it together. I feel like there's no place for unification. I say, bring back the United States of MTV. We're talking with Martha Quinn, legendary, iconic Martha uh, Quinn, so original MTV VJ, uh, 80s plus, 103.7 out of San Francisco on our free iHeartRadio app. Uh, I know we're, we're short on time, and I really appreciate all the time you're spending with me, Martha. Uh, this has just made my entire year. Uh, what? I, one more question, really, about MTV. Do you think that MTV followed trends that were already emerging, or do you think MTV pushed the musical trends along the way. I mean, I think back MTV, when you launched, you were really an alternative radio station, but then pop music came along and hip hop and grunge and MTV to me seemed to be leading the way, but really in New York, you could have been reacting to what you were seeing around you. Boy, that's a chicken and the egg situation. I can tell you this, somebody like Madonna, Prince, Duran Duran, Michael Jackson, they would have been superstars no matter what, because when you have that drive inside that fire, they would have made use of any promotional opportunities available. I mean, superstars happened before MTV, but certainly MTV made bands like The Stray Cats, The Psychedelic Furs, Duran Duran happened because at that time, nobody was playing that kind of band except you know a few indie rock stations around the country. Mostly Foreigner and Journey were dominating the airways and we came along and we needed video. And a lot of these artists out of England had videos because their Top of the Pops was a big promotional opportunity. So we had a lot of early, uh, early, what am I trying to say? Early uh, British videos because they knew, oh, we need that there. So definitely MTV set the trend in that case. As far as the pop music and the rap music, you know, we were in New York City. So there we might have been following and kind of paying attention to what was happening on the streets. It all kind of jumbles around, but in the early days, oh my gosh, movies started to be made that looked like MTV. Commercials started to be made that looked like MTV. The way Miami Vice got pitched to the networks was MTV Cops. Nuff said, show deal. Let's go. Green light it. So MTV definitely created trends. Could you name the best three music videos of the MTV era? I can name my three favorite right now. 2021 because it changes all the time i'm gonna say right now my three top favorite videos are oh that's such a tough one oh man that's so hard <laughs> number one van halen jump and i'll tell you why i love van halen i like that you can really see them you can really see them playing around I tend to like that type of video. Aha, take on me. I mean, obviously a classic. You can't watch that one enough. And I'm going to say number three, Joan Jett and the Black Hearts, Crimson and Clover, because I love how she rocks out. And I think that's a hot song. Those are great. Martha Quinn, my God, it's it's been an honor to have you on the show. So nice to talk with, with you and, and so sweet for, for your time. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Scott. Appreciate it. All right, you can find Martha on our free iHeartRadio app, 80s plus 103.7 out of San Francisco. You've got a podcast as well. Search for Martha Quinn. So great to have you on. Thanks again. Thanks, Scott, for the invite. Take care.